But to get the show started this morning, we are talking about international financial reporting standards. And to do that, we have a man who is very familiar with us here at CNMG, uh, Mr. Joseph Remy, who is the president of the Cooperative Credit Union League. And joining us as well is Mr. Michael Edwards, who is vice president and legal counsel mm -hmm. at the World Council of Credit Unions. Good morning and welcome, gentlemen. Hi, Thank good you. morning, Mishi. It's a pleasure once again. So we're talking <coughs> about international financial reporting standards. I want to start with Mr. Edwards. What is this about? Well, so credit unions in most jurisdictions around the world report their accounting on international financial reporting standards. And these standards have been updated for a new approach to loan loss accounting, essentially to have expected credit losses for the lifetime of most loans. And that's actually not that different from what credit unions have been doing in Trinidad and Tobago up until now. But banks in other parts of the world, like Europe, in many cases have been holding loans that had not had a payment in years without writing them down at all. So the standards have been updated to try to uh, solve that problem, which is really not a problem for credit unions, but a problem for banks in places like Italy and Spain. However, it's a very complicated uh, type of standard, mm -hmm. um, or at least it seems on the surface because it's 235 pages long. However, we've been able to reduce it down to a six-page summary using equations that any credit union can use. So it's actually not as bad as it seems, but there's a lot of confusion about it given the complexity of the standard, and also because I think some accounting firms and consultants would rather have you hire them to do the work for mm -hmm. you rather than explain it in a way you could do it yourself. Yeah. And there is a two-day workshop taking place in Trinidad and Tobago, Mr. Remy. Yes, definitely. What happened is that based on the fears and the concerns expressed consistent with what Michael has said, the League as the umbrella body felt it was our obligation to bring more light to this particular standard because initially there was the, there was the concern that this is going to severely impair on credit unions surplus and if you know the structure of the movement is such that the surplus belongs to the membership who are the shareholders and at the end of the year based on the financial reports that comes out of the the, the operations, the, surpl the surplus is divided among the membership, which is the dividends payments that members normally have, which is what is one of the major distinction between credit unions and the other financial institutions. And there was a, the major fear that this is going to impair on the ability of credit unions to pay a reasonable dividend mm -hmm. on the basis of that you have to now make greater provisions for loan loss on the basis of expected losses against the historical application in the past. And we decided that, look, we would hold some workshops to sensitize our members and our accounting personnel and our board of directors on the implications of the, the standard and how we properly apply it consistent with what the, the regulations require. While we may have our concerns about the process that was used with the standards, because it's not a credit union developed standard, it's an international financial standard, we, because we are in the market, we are in the sector, we have to ensure our credit unions are prepared to deal with it in a very cost-effective manner. And it's against that background we decided that we should go to the head. The structure of the movement is that we have regional credit unions, we have Trinidad and Tobago belonging to the Caribbean Confederation of Credit Unions, mm -hmm. and the Caribbean Confederations belong to the World Council. And we felt that we should get somebody with the expertise in this area to come down here and do workshops with our key personnel so that they will have a more simplistic application of the standard that will allay some of the fears in the first instance and then allow us to do the thing properly going forward. So the first session was on Monday and we, because of the demographics of the movement, we have credit unions spread throughout the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago. We, done, we had done it from credit unions belonging to two chapters, two regions, the Northeast Regional um, Chapter and the Northwest Regional Chapter. Today we are going to do it for the Southeast, the Southwest and the Central inclusive of Tobago. So the other workshop is today. Um, where is it taking place? It is taking time? place at the Campo restaurant in Shogonas, and it starts at 9.30, and it runs for the entire day. You know, and because of the intense work that is required, it's a whole day workshop. And, and based on the feedback on Monday, and Michael could attest it, you know, the membership, the participants were very receptive because they felt that this approach by WOCQ is much more amenable to them and understandable as against what happened in the past with other workshops that we would have done on the same in reporting standard and as such. We, the, it is oversubscribed. To be honest, mm -hmm. credit unions have really 
come into this whole thing because they would like to understand and appreciate how to apply the standard or what the impact of the standard is going to have on their operations and their financial stability. Yeah. And Mr. Edwards, you were here for the meeting on Monday. Oh, right? yes, yes. And actually, it went quite well. We had more than 30 participants in that uh, from several different credit unions, mostly uh, from the northeast and northwest of, of Trinidad. And um, basically, at the end of the workshop, uh, all the participants felt that they understood the standard and could apply it for their credit union. It's really we break it down into three different buckets, uh, loans that have never had problems, loans that have had some problems but are not in default, and loans that are in default. And then within each of those buckets, you have a different sub-bucket for each type of loan. So whatever number of loan products the credit union has. So it's actually not that complicated when you break it down there. If you have four types of loans, you have 12 equations, and then you add them up. So there's a lot of confusion over this, but it's mostly because I think people have not seen the math. Yeah. So when people come, exactly what do they do? Do you sit down with them and break it down? Is it an, a one-on-one -on -one thing, or how do you do it? So it begins with essentially a presentation to go through the whole standard. And then after that and a break, we end up going through having each of the credit unions do it for their loan book. And so that's part of where the time is, is that essentially we do it as a group, but the questions one-on-one -on -one, uh, tutoring. And um, it's really not rocket science when you break it down. It's just a series of, of math, mostly math, uh, multiplication and addition. It's only multiplication and addition. Yeah. And I, I want to stick with you for a second then, Mr. Sure. Edwards, and find out what do you think are the major concerns in Trinidad and Tobago from what, have you from what you've heard? I think it's mostly that people do not understand the standard. The, the way that many of the accounting firms and consultants explain it is at a very complex level, which does not break it down to how do I do it with a calculator. We've approached it from how do we do it with a calculator. Mm -hmm. And that, once people can see it that way and they can look at their loan books and say, well, okay, I've done the figures, this is what it is, I think the confusion and, and uh, concerns dissipate. So, Mr. Remy, uh, Mr. Edwards thinks that that is the major concern that is taking place right now. Where do you see Trinidad and Tobago going after this workshop, and how do you think it's going to affect them? I, I believe that it is going to bring a greater awareness of the application of the standard. It is going to allow credit And you see, what has to happen is that credit unions now would be more informed when they have to report to their membership, because credit unions must, on an annual basis, at the annual general meeting, report to their membership. And if, you, if this is bandied about that this is going to impact on the ability of credit unions to pay dividends and to do other things, and then the standard also applies to investments, and I think Mr. Edwards may be in a better position to also speak to that in terms of long-term investments and if they are impaired over a period of time, which will also impact on the credit union's um, balance sheet. And as such, it is important for us, and we believe that it was absolutely necessary to, to go down further into the standard, because we felt that while it may have been something confusing in the initial stages, mm -hmm. it is something that we had to address, and we had to address to appease and to ease the concerns among our membership. And we believe now that we are much more informed. We will now go out to the wider membership, crusade like in that manner how we normally do it, and advise them of the standards, the implications, what are our concerns? Because we would still have concerns, not just with the mathematical aspect, mathematical aspect of the standards, but with respect to the fact that we believe, as a major player in the financial services sector, the credit union movement needs to be given that space to, to raise concerns when those things are conceptualized. And I think that is where WACU, you, World Council at their major global ac um, advocacy level, will always meet those challenges. And it has to be something that is consistent and, and, and pervasive all, all along. And as such, we believe that this workshop is very informative. It is, it is instructive and it is timely. And it is going to make the application and the, the, um, how we deal with the standard much more amenable at the end of the day. And I think credit unions are going to benefit in terms of the exposure to this information. And, and if we have to raise any concerns, we are raising concerns from a position of being much more well informed. Yeah. So we talk about dividends and credit unions paying these things. How, how do we calculate that? Well, if the credit union is well capitalized, it can pay a dividend. If it has a lower capitalization level, it may not be able to uh, under the regulations. Mm -hmm. um, but part of the change here from 
what is called an incurred loss, essentially only defaulted loans in under the previous standard, although credit unions were always writing down the loans after 30 days of that's arrears, right. which was not true for banks. So that's part of why it's less bad for credit right. unions. But moving to an expected credit loss, those losses are happening on an accounting basis, but not an economic basis. So the total amount of capital that the credit union has economically to absorb bad loans is not going to change. It's simply how it's presented for accounting purposes. And the regulatory capital rules established by the Basel Committee on Banking Supervision in Switzerland for the whole world will allow jurisdictions to add back the new reserves to their capital for a transitional period while they, they try to rearrange the whole regulatory capital rules to take into account the changes in accounting rules themselves because they're slightly different concepts, the capital ratio and how you present for, for loan losses, essentially. But at the end of the day, before IFRS 9 and after IFRS 9, the credit union is going to have the same amount of money on hand to absorb losses and protect its members' savings than, you know, before. Yeah, you talk about loss and protecting the, the savings of, of people. You know, that is something people are always skeptical yeah. about, yeah. especially when it comes to things like these. And we always yeah. say the economic mm. downturn. Mm. That's right. So how do we mitigate something like that with these standards? Well, this standard is intended to try to make everyone better prepared for the next downturn. But as I mentioned, the credit unions in Trinidad and Tobago were always writing down the loans after 30 days of not receiving payments. Mm -hmm. That is not true under the accounting standard that applied to banks. This was actually more stringent for credit unions. And most of the credit union loans are secured, or at least partially secured, often with the member savings on deposit with the credit union or real estate. So credit unions have a very conservative lending model. Uh, they do not usually go out and make loans that are poorly thought out. Um, and they have security as well. So if you have a loan that's two-thirds secured by cash, it's actually not going to be different after IFRS 9 than before, except in terms of the accounting being more granular in terms of how it's looked at. Now, other loan products, it may be different. But it all depends on, on the particular facts and circumstances of that credit union and its loans and what type of security it has. Mm. And Mr. Remy, we, we specifically speaking here for Trinidad and Tobago now. That's right, yeah. People are skeptical about a lot of things, especially because they don't know what's happening. That's right. Can this give people confidence? Well, it, it is a step in the right direction. I, I want to put it in that context because we believe that while there are skepticism and people always raise concerns about anything new that is, has, has developed, we have to understand the historical context from where we come, you know, and we believe that as a parent body, it is our responsibility to continue to expose persons and the people who are in the system and who operates the thing to the information and the knowledge that will allow us to gradually over time allay those fears. And, and we believe that this is going to lift the level of confidence in the movement. We would hope that it is going to demonstrate, and I'm happy that Mr. Edwards, so seeing it from an external perspective, could say that Trinidad and Tobago Credit Union, and we have been saying that all along, we are not as risky as the other financial institutions because we are doing the things that we believe are necessary to follow prudential standards. And, and loans in credit unions are always secured in most instances, either by shares, by deposits, they bring in collateral, sometimes they bring in property, they bring in insurance, whatever it is, because we believe that the, the rationale we use is that if you're borrowing, you're not borrowing somebody, you're borrowing a, a member's money. And if you don't pay it back, you're going to impact on the other member ability to get credit at the end of the day. So we believe it is going to imbue greater confidence in the cooperative credit union movement. And we hope by the work that we are doing at the League, in conjunction with, with, with the World Council, that the wider citizen will realize that the best way to invest your money is in the cooperative credit union movement. And, and Mr. Edwards is here, yes. and I, I'm sure that uh, what Mr. Remy say you can attest to, uh, they are doing what is necessary, are they? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. I mean, this standard itself has been uh, on the books for about four years, but it's just being phased in this year. So everybody's right on time for, for doing it in Trinidad and Tobago. And actually, some jurisdictions like Canada, they haven't issued the proposal to do it yet. So actually, you're ahead of the game compared to some, some jurisdictions. And it really is, at the end of the day, there's going to be more money set aside to absorb losses than before. So that's the thing to take away. It's actually strengthening everything. Uh, but the credit unions were already pretty strong. It's really banks in Europe that this is for, and that's how it is for so <laughs> many different things. There's a problem one place, Italy, Spain, Portugal, sure. and it that's comes right. to Trinidad and Tobago. 
Yeah, so Trinidad and Tobago ahead of the game, we, we're moving fast. Then. Well, we, we believe that we should be in p at peace with the other developing countries and the other developed countries. And you see, because of the global structure of the movement, no, we can't be lagging behind, you know, because what happens in Europe or in America or any other place in Asia or whatever directly impacts on us. Because if you look at sometimes even the investment structure of some credit unions, because of we, while we have to go through the cooperative development division and the commissioner in terms of investment, if we have to continue to satisfy the, the needs of our members, we have to get into not too risky investments. Mm -hmm. And as such, anything happens in the external market impacts on Chenda and Tobago. So we believe that we are taking a proactive approach in terms of how we manage the affairs of the cooperative credit union sector. And we believe this is, some, this is a step in the direction that we have been articulating for a while. There are other things that we want to do along that same line because we would want to ensure at the end of the day we must demonstrate that the credit union sector, despite what has happened in the past with one credit union that they used, try to use to label all credit unions, and then at the end of the day bring a regulatory and a legislative structure that was very onerous on us and was mm -hmm. going to corral us like commercial banks. We have to demonstrate that there is confidence in the movement, there is security, there is safety, and there is soundness in the movement, and it is going to be exemplified by the work we do and the programs that we have for educating our membership. Yep. And just one more time, the, the second part of the workshop is, is gonna, today? It's going to be held today at the Campo restaurant. It starts at 9.30, and it is going to cater for all credit unions in the southwest regional area, the southeast regional area, and the central regional area. And it is going to be conducted once again by Mr. Edwards. And I am saying this on the response and the comments I, we have gotten from Monday's program, this morning is going to be another encouraging and exhilarating program. And I think it is going to benefit the entire cooperative credit union movement. And, and if people want to come, what do they do? Well, it, it is very tight in terms of registration. So if anybody wants to come now, you may have to contact the league's office at Shogunas. And I think it might be a challenge to be registered now. What mm -hmm. we intend to do is to widen it. And now, based on the success of this particular initiative, we are going to have other programs because what we want to ensure is that it's not just the accountants and the accounting personnel who understand the standard. But you remember our structure is that board members come from the layman. So we have to bring this out to our board members and our committee members, particularly the credit committees, because they are the ones who engage in granting loans mm -hmm. to members and as such. They must have a great appreciation of the implications. So we are going to do a follow-up to this based on the success of this program. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Joseph Fermi, President of the Cooperative Credit Union League, and Mr. Michael Edwards, Vice President and Legal Counsel, World Council of Credit Unions. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming in, and good luck with the workshop for today, and hopefully we see some results. Thanks so much, Richie. It was a pleasure. Thank you.